Hello, my name is Kevin. I'm a core surgical trainee from Torbay and South Devon NHS Foundation Trust. Today I'll be going through outcomes of metatarsal osteotomy surgery. So metatarsalgia defined as pain under the forefoot places a considerable burden on the quality of life for patients suffering from the condition. Conservative management is firstly indicated and this includes things like plantar orthotics, metatarsal pads, but if these then fail, then surgery is required to normalise the distribution of pressures over the forefoot. Metatarsal osteotomies were first described by Meisenbach in 1916. The distal metatarsal minimally invasive osteotomy and the vial osteotomy are becoming widely used techniques for managing these patients. So vial osteotomy is an open technique whereby an oscillating saw is used to split the metatarsal into two and then in a later stage, the two bits of bone are joined together, usually using 2mm diameter screw, which are normally 9 to 11 millimetres long. This differs from a distal metatarsal minimally invasive osteotomy, which is a percutaneous approach, and a oscillating burr is introduced to the metatarsal extra-articularly, and the metatarsal is then split. Here the difference is that the two bits of bone are left as they are, and it's thought that the elevation and the shortening of the metatarsal will cause some of or reduce some offloading and will reduce the ground reaction force and thereby improving the patient's symptoms. So I wanted to ask the question, are the patients experiencing better outcomes after the surgery? Well, to help me answer this question, I did a retrospective data collection from 2017 to 2020 of every patient that had had um, either a vials or a DMMO. Patients reported outcome measures were assessed uh, via the Manchester Oxford Foot Questionnaire, the MOXFQ for short. And this is a 16, quest 16 point questionnaire on a five Likert scale, which goes through factors um, such as foot pain, social walk, social interaction, and problems of walking or standing. Um, patients that answer this from zero to four with four being the most severe and then the scores for each category are summed up to give you an overall score. This was done in the pre-operative assessment clinic, the post-operative clinic which is normally four to six weeks after and at least 12 months later in clinic follow-up. Exclusion criteria were minors under the age of 18 and patients with previous surgery to the metatarsals. So I initially had a cohort number of 14 but this reduced down to 12 because we lost two patients to follow up. 75% of the patients were female. The average age was 57. Six patients had a VARS. Six patients had a DMMO. And what my findings were was that on average, the, pre the score in the preoperative phase was around 36, which is quite high. There was again a widespread of scores um, as seen by the box violin plot at the bottom. Post-operatively, around four, after, four to six weeks thereafter, the average score reduced down to 28. In the one year follow-up, the average score again reduced down to 16, which was statistically significantly lower than the pre-operative scores when compared. Again, though, I note there were quite a range of scores. So, the majority of patients after surgery had an improvement in their well-being. Clinical improvements in patient symptoms are gradual and may take up to 12 months as the results show. And this should be reiterated to patients prior to surgical intervention. I do note that two patients even after surgery had reported worsening pain. So further work will be to compare the outcomes of patients directly in the vials and the DMMO group. Uh, we will include data from our Mount Stewart Hospital. Limitations of this study are, of course, it's a single centre study. Thank you for listening.